Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. The stones here are in Gilbert Hill State Forest and the surrounding town forest. And the story today is notches. Notches are something that are very aptly named. They are notches, V-shaped, U-shaped, carved into stone. What were they used for? They were used to orient viewers to celestial or solar events. In this case, this one points directly at sunrise in the summer solstice. But you have to ask yourself a question when you take a look at something like this is, was it intended to see the sunrise? Because if so, there are a lot of trees in the way. It's the same question that was asked in the book Manitou by Maven and Dix. And one of the conclusions they came to is that Native Americans could have uh, had the practice where they cut off the bark around the base of trees and trees eventually fell over and that's how they cleared out the sight line. They could have been burned as well. Uh, certainly if they were burned, there would be a soil record that could be proven. However, there has to be another possibility discussed and that is, in fact, there were no trees here when this stone was carved. They had a clean line of sight to the horizon. And when would that have been? Well, now we get into a conversation around whether or not this is possible evidence of when the Americas were peopled. As we all learned in school back in the day that uh, it happened around 15,000 years ago and people came over from the Bering Land Bridge while it was frozen during the Ice Age. The problem with that is more and more data and facts contradict that. Footprints in New Mexico dated to 22,000 years ago, and stone tools dated right around 18 to 20,000 years ago in Utah. Well, if all those things were happening after 15,000 years, is it really the case that we were first peopled in that Bering Land Bridge 15,000 years ago? Well, what was happening here around that time? The, the glaciers were just receding, they were beginning to melt, and 12,000 years ago, the woodland period began. So there was a period of time where there was not a lot here between the Ice Age and the Forest Age or the, or the Woodland Age. I wanted to pause the video here and discuss some information I've obtained since originally recording this. I've been in contact with professional researchers and archaeologists and on the topic of when the woods or forest started to grow in this area of New England, I was informed, even though I'm not sure it's been published, I haven't been able to find it, it may have been, that car uh, carbon dating of, of pollen uh, in a nearby pond indicated that the forest started to grow in this area 8,000 years ago. So if we think about when the line of sight would have first started to get blocked by trees in this area, that would date back to 8,000 years ago, uh, and certainly all the way back to when the glaciers melted 15,000 years ago. Certainly creates an interesting question as to when this uh, structure would have been carved, if in fact it is an authentic uh, notch. Uh, and potentially uh, being one of the oldest stone structures or structures in North America. Uh, in an article uh, related to mounds, finding the oldest known structure in North America to be dating back. It's in Louisiana. I'll put the link in the description to the article, uh, but 11,000 years ago. So certainly this could have been made in that same time period and possibly even older. Begs the question why professional archaeologists aren't necessarily all that interested in uh, in researching items like this, which uh, certainly could have the possibility of being extremely old for the area, if not the oldest structure in North America. All right, back to the video. So is it possible that this was carved in that period? And if so, are stones like this evidence of when the Americas were first peopled? I find it an interesting question. We're here to check out notches today. <laughs> and let's check this one out. Not only does this one, and we'll take a close up of it in a second, have the groove cut to the horizon, but it's got a line here. This looks to me suspiciously like the groove cut in the dolmen in our first episode, where, as I suggested, that definitely had uh, the ability to gather, collect, and funnel fluid. 
it is the case, uh, and I was reminded not too long ago by an expert in the field, that Native Americans had a variety of water rituals. And so this could cer certainly be a collection point in the course of a water ritual. Let's take a look at the notch. As we approach this notch, uh, we definitely can see evidence, uh, very clear evidence here, that water runs down this groove that extends from the notch itself. That notch comes up here and is very clearly a nice line of sight through the stone. If we take a quick look at the Sunseeker app, we can see that Depending on the height of the horizon, this would be pointing at right at sunrise, around 6.30, 7 a.m. into the summer solstice. But again, you've got to ask yourself, you're not seeing much of sunrise through those trees. So what was really here when they carved this notch? All right, this is our first notch. This is the one, uh, the first one I found uh, in my exploration of this forest. And we are going to find, go take a look at another one that I came across while I was researching the dual prayer seat episode on site B. So let's take a look. All right, we're coming up on another boulder that would have the characteristics of having a notch in it. I've already placed my phone on there so we can take a look. But you can definitely see a pronounced dip in this stone. It's different than the first one we saw. Uh, however, when I put the Sunseeker app on there, lo and behold, uh, this lines up uh, right on in this direction with sunrise, sunset on the spring and fall equinox. We come around to the side. You can see this is dipped down a bit that's probably about 15 feet long it's about 8 10 feet wide and has sort of a hollowed out structure to it as it heads down toward the ground come around here see what it looks like from the other angle Yeah, it really has a nice a clear dip to it. And it's notch. I don't see anything else around this boulder. Uh, that would be of much interest, but uh, we aren't too far from where the dual, the second set of dual prayer seats are. And as a matter of fact, I was headed there now to film that sequence. So that concludes our episode on notches. These are uh, grooves carved into the top of embedded boulders that, in this case, align to solar events. Uh, they're also referenced in the book Manitou by Maver and Dix, and there they also orient viewers uh, to either lunar or celestial events as well. This episode also brings into question uh, the uh, origin timeline for these types of structures since it presumes that you need a line of sight to the horizon with the trees in the way you aren't getting that so theoretically these could have been built before the forest even grew and we will come back to this particular site again in future segments where we investigate uh, areas that are uh, have clusters of structures that would imply that they were ceremonial sites used in conjunction for some purpose so until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.